Hello, I'm Mary V. Today, let's talk about what to do with the left hand and the left thumb when you're not using a shoulder rest. So there's a very different way of playing when you don't use a shoulder rest. The chin and the collarbone and the shoulder and the hand and the thumb have all got a very coordinated part to play and they must all act together. For example, the, the violin sits directly on the collarbone and the head is resting on the chin rest. Now, if you want to use a cloth, I think that might be a good idea because there's a bit more um, space filled up by a cloth. Um, if there's a lot of space left, what I mean by space, if there's a big space left and you have to put your head down a lot, then you might as well use a shoulder rest to um, fill in that space at the bottom, really. You know, if you've got a long neck, which a lot of women do, and uh, you don't wear suits because a, a lot of um, players in the past used to put a little secret pad underneath their, their suit to give a bit of support. So um, the whole reason for shoulder rest is to free the head, the collarbone, and especially the shoulder from taking part in when we uh, make shifts. It's all to do with shifts. Because when we um, go up in shifts, the violin is sort of pressured against our neck, right? But when we come back down, um, the violin can actually detach. There's a, a weight going back that way. And you have to use your head more strongly and also probably use your shoulder to hold the violin and stop it from um, shooting off that way. So how to prevent that is, is where the left hand and the thumb comes into play, where it takes a, a much greater part in holding the violin and shifting. So let me see if I can do the demonstrate the shifting that you have to do uh, on the without a shoulder rest. So the thumb is just in its normal place and just before you shift the thumb moves to the new place up. Right? And then when you're coming back down the thumb moves first. Okay? Let me show you from the other angle. Like that. Now obviously I'm doing it very, very uh, slowly, but it does become second nature and it's absolutely essential. Because what it does is it, although you do have to use your head and your shoulder more when you don't use a shoulder rest, um, the issue is that um, you only ideally want to use the shoulder to hold the violin when you're um, going down the way, like that, okay? But the difficulty is that um, it's very difficult to remember to let that squeeze go and go into a, a more head-held position. So the head and the shoulder tend to squeeze to stop the violin from going in this direction away. So, and you've got to, if, if you want to play like that, then you've got to learn to hold the violin with a, a little squeeze, but let it go. And it's rather difficult to do that. And if you can't do that, you will get quite a lot of pain and difficulty, and it will start to affect your left hand. It, it, it isn't as free to um, be as agile as it needs to be. So if you're finding all these difficulties, um, then get yourself a, a shoulder rest and just start using that. But if you really don't want to and you feel the violin sounds better, which it can do, uh, with no shoulder rest, you need to get the technique of how to coordinate between the head, the shoulder, the thumb and the hand to enable yourself to be able to move up and down freely. Now, there's another very important part of the hand, uh, and it's this part. 
when you don't use a shoulder rest. It's this part here. And it all, almost acts as a, a crook or a hold. You're holding the violin. You're definitely holding it there. And in fact, when you do that, the thumb is freer to move forward and back into the new positions to help you move up. I mean, when you go up here, um, there's very little that the thumb can actually do and you have to just um, play with the thumb guidance at the back there. And probably your, your head will just have to clamp down for the weight to stop the violin from falling forward. But when you look at some uh, violinists from the past, like uh, Ruggiero Ricci, um, Heifetz, um, marvellous proponents, I mean, of playing without a shoulder rest, and they just perfected the art of combining what the head does, what the shoulder does, what the hand does, what, what this part of the base of the first finger does, and the thumb. and it just looks as easy as nowadays when you see um, soloists playing with a, sho a shoulder rest. I think people with small hands um, find that they do need a little bit of help um, by eliminating any squeezing at all from here. It's just easier for the technique. But it's completely up to you. There's no hard and fast rule, but there are plenty of techniques about um, what you have to do with your left hand and how the head and the left hand have to work together much more um, without a shoulder rest. So uh, I'll leave it to you and good luck on your violin journey. I'll say bye-bye for now. Bye.